there are many reasons why a cardiologist might order a cardiac MRI. This is an MRI scan of the heart, which may be done to investigate symptoms and may be done simply to get reassurance that the heart structure and function is normal. But it might be done because of abnormal investigations in addition to symptoms such as abnormal ECG, the electrical tracing of the heart, or abnormalities on echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart. And cardiac MRI may be done to look for evidence of disease of the heart muscle, disease of the heart valves, or potential scar within the heart muscle that may explain abnormal rhythm, or MRI of the heart may be done because of family history of a condition to look for any evidence of that uh, condition in other family members. We can also assess the blood vessels coming from and going to the heart, but often uh, scans are done also to look at the adequacy of the blood supply to the heart. But essentially there are a large number of reasons why an MRI of the heart might be requested. And actually this is a technique that offers the potential to assess many, many aspects of the heart and vascular system in a single test. MRI can diagnose a wide range of abnormalities of the heart, either of the heart muscle or the heart valves or the heart function, but also the blood vessels coming to and from the heart. We can diagnose heart attack damage or scar within the heart for other reasons, and we can also identify whether the blood supply to the heart is inadequate and diagnose what we call ischemic heart disease, that is evidence of previous heart attack damage or evidence that the blood supply to the heart as it stands is inadequate. We can identify congenital heart disease, so abnormalities that have been present from birth, but often actually a cardiac MRI is requested for reassurance that the heart structure and function is normal um, so that a patient can be reassured that is the case despite having had symptoms. But essentially cardiac MRI can assess really the whole breadth of cardiac abnormalities in a single test. The most important thing to not do the night before a cardiac MRI is to worry. Uh, if you are anxious about having the test, please do contact the department and they will hopefully be able to explain things to you further beforehand and offer you reassurance uh, because Obviously, this is not intended to be an unpleasant procedure and spending the night worrying uh, is, is not what we want to happen. Um, obviously, if we can make sure you have a good understanding of the test before you come for it, then that will hopefully allay any anxiety you have. Um, importantly, if you are having what is called a stress perfusion cardiac MRI, so an MRI scan to look at the adequacy of the blood supply to the heart, it is important to remain free from caffeine in all its forms, ideally for 24 hours before the scan. So that's not just coffee, tea, but also chocolate and many fizzy drinks and also many decaffeinated products actually still have some caffeine. So we generally request that patients remain free of caffeine for the 24 hours ahead of the scan to uh, reduce the chance of, of an, a falsely negative scan. Generally, cardiac MRI scans that are performed privately in our centres are reported uh, within the next working day of the scan and then sent to the referrer. So uh, it is not typical for the report to be sent directly to the patient, uh, but they will ideally be sent to whichever cardiologist or doctor, whatever their specialty requested the scan, um, usually no later than the following working day after the scan's been performed. So if there is an abnormality on the cardiac MRI scan, that result will be sent to the referrer and it is then for the referrer to ideally discuss with you, the patient or your relative, if they are the patient, what that abnormality indicates and what the potential options for following that up are, which may be nothing, simply some follow-up observation or seeing what happens with time, but it may lead to further tests or commencement of medication or other interventions. But obviously exactly what happens will depend both on exactly what the abnormality is and the severity of that, but also on the particular circumstances of the patient. But that is usually a discussion for the doctor who referred the patient to have with the patient rather than the doctor who is reporting the MRI.